everyone welcome to today's video i'm so excited about today's video because this has been seriously one of my most requested videos and that is how i take notes now initially i wanted to go straight ahead and kind of go through a step-by-step -step take notes with me session but then i realized I want to make this video accessible to everyone and show you that there are very different methods of note taking and because we each have our own study styles and inclinations, I wanted to make something that was kind of more accessible to everyone. So instead, I thought it would be interesting to kind of show you how my note taking style has evolved from high school to university. And I think this will be really helpful too because I know a lot of you guys are from a variety of different levels of education, so hopefully watching this video you'll get a bunch of different ideas about different ways that you can take notes and maybe one of those methods will inspire you to try something new and I hope it will be interesting to take a little walk down memory lane and see what high school Hannah <laughs> was all about so without further ado let's get started I literally have so many notebooks on the floor right now I'm going to start off with my note taking methods in high school. I don't want to say this was like a bad method of taking notes, but you know, looking back on it, I think it was less efficient. So even though the way I took notes in high school took a lot more time um, and it wasn't as efficient, it allowed me to spend more time with the material. In fact, taking pretty notes was probably the main source of motivation I had for spending so much time looking and engaging with the material. And I think that's partly why I was able to get really good grades in high school because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been as motivated to study. So initially I really did just like basically copy out the textbook. But I would almost always write down definitions, important events and dates. This is my social studies notebook. I would highlight things if the textbook highlighted things. There really wasn't much active self-thinking during this time. It was very much just memorizing the textbook, which you know, it does work. It is something that could help you get a good grade on a test, but this doesn't necessarily correlate to understanding the material. So I feel like, you know, I could have I could have changed a few things. At the start of grade 11 though, I really found my love of using colors and school supplies to really just make my notes look pretty. So I would spend a lot more time doing my notes. So these are my notes from grade 11 chemistry. I feel like I was getting better at understanding what was important. I also started appreciating the importance of concepts, which is why I would spend more time not only copying out the diagram, but also adding in my own little notes outside of it to explain things to myself. But obviously the thing I struggled with most was still just efficiency. Halfway through the year, I started splitting my notes into columns because I write pretty small and I feel like this format allowed me to fit a lot more on a page. The flow of information made better sense to me and I just feel like it, it made things a lot easier. So the sticky notes would just be like super important points that I felt like needed to stand out, hence why they are on sticky notes. And I also started limiting the things that I took notes on. So I wouldn't write down every single thing the textbook wrote down. I would basically copy out definitions word for word. I hadn't yet discovered online flashcards and I didn't want to spend so much money making like 5,000 flashcards. So I wrote down the definitions very in a very tiny font. But I feel like this helped so much because everything that I needed to know was on this one page. So it was almost like a summary sheet and made looking back and learning things and studying things for exams a lot easier as well. And I spent so much time on the diagrams because they were so fun. This is a great opportunity for your inner child to come out. You get to draw, you get to color, um, and you're learning at the same time. It's freaking awesome. Like, look at these little drawings. I was living my best life. I was living for these notes. I had so much fun making these. If my notes looked pretty and I knew I worked hard making them, I would love to go back and study these. Like, I was so motivated to. If that sounds like something you would do, twins. 
So in university, I think most people would agree that the biggest difference between university and high school isn't necessarily the difficulty of the information you learn, but it's the amount that you learn. So the textbooks have a lot more info. So if you're copying things verbatim from the textbook, it's not going to be efficient because it's going to take you so long. Professors aren't going to test you on every single thing because that's a limitation that they face too. So instead, it's really important to find a way to read the textbook, learn from it, and summarize it in a way that you actually understand the concepts and can apply it in different situations. So at the beginning of university, I still kind of used the same format, but if you can tell, there's a lot less pictures. Um, the information itself is a lot denser. It's almost completely definitions. Another example from one of my psychology classes on consciousness, I would still try to incorporate some color, uh, some things to keep the notes interesting, but it became a lot just denser. I wasn't just writing down definitions at this point because I started realizing online flashcards are a thing. It's really easy. I talk about them a lot, but there's a bunch of apps that you can use so that you have the flashcards everywhere. I would just do them on the bus and it was just a much more effective way of using my time. So that way when I wrote notes, I could really focus on the important concepts. As well in university, you're taking a lot of different classes. You're exposed to a lot of different professors who teach in different ways and use different formats and mediums of teaching resources. So to be a good student, to learn to the best of your ability, and as a sometimes unintended outcome, get good grades, you really have to be flexible in your methods of learning. So one of the ways that's reflected is in the way you take notes. So one of the things I started realizing was that I would have to adapt the way I took notes for different classes. So you can kind of see that in my formatting, I wasn't just writing in columns anymore. For example, in my anthropology class, I realized it was really important to understand how things progressed and what the changes were through each period. So this will lead to a lot more diagrams. And I feel like instead of using colors to make it look pretty, at this point, I was using colors to enhance my understanding. I love this page because this is a timeline I made where I basically summarized like an entire unit that we had to learn. I used color coding, but again, it was minimal. I wasn't trying to go crazy with things and I really condensed things down to what I thought were most important keywords, key concepts. Um, so this is a timeline of hominin evolution. I have a little legend on the top. I have like the different, I forgot what they were called, the classifications of time, I think. So another format that I began to use more often was mind maps. Um, I really liked using mind maps to summarize after I learned a unit or a chapter in most of my science classes. I think this is a very important process in the note-taking method. I think finding different ways of summarizing the information you learn is a very good way of practicing recall and also getting a better comprehension of the information and how things relate to each other and just broaden and deepen your understanding. So I would still take those two column notes from the textbook as usual, but then at the end I would summarize things. I would try to link different ideas and concepts and things together in a way that made sense to me. Sometimes I would write down how I found things to relate to each other. And this became super handy when I was studying for midterms or finals because I had all the information I needed. Even though this might be like an extra step to your note taking method, I think learning to summarize and make mind maps can become a very important component in a student's tool belt. So I would highly recommend it because I think it has a lot of long-term benefits in terms of future exams and just deepening your understanding. Love my maps, they're awesome. This is another my map I have on voltage gated ion channels. And finally, I'm just gonna show you some of the notes I have that I've taken most recently, uh, just to kind of show you where I'm at now, in case you haven't seen some of my previous videos where I often include uh, footage of me taking notes. I still follow a lot of the same sort of concepts. So for instance, I still prefer writing notes in two columns, but now at this point, I really, <laughs> this looks like a page of just, text, which it basically is. 
but this is some of the notes I took just I think this weekend on Egyptian history so I only use black blue and red I am very much more minimal in my color coding methods but I feel like it helps a lot for me because when I do use color, it really pops out and I know I can see straight away what is important. All of the information is very much condensed. I only write down what I think is most important and obviously what is considered important varies from class to class and the ability to recognize what is something that could be tested on is a skill that you learn through time and practice. I also still like to draw. I still like to find different ways of expressing concepts that help me learn things and see things from a different perspective. So this is a little notebook I used for my zoology class last year. So these are all notes that I actually took during lecture. I didn't take notes from the textbook at all, which is pretty shocking. Um, but I just wanted to show you that you can take effective notes in lecture too. There's a lot of diagrams, um, definitions. Give yourself enough space so that when you go back and review your notes after class, which you should do, you can write in little notes to yourself to help you clarify concepts. And if you do read the textbook and there's something that you missed or something that furthers your understanding, you can add that in as well. Here is a cute little diagram I drew of the respiration respiratory system of a lungfish as well as an amphibian. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And that's about it. I hope this video has been helpful and that you guys have gotten a few new ideas about how you can take notes more effectively and what methods you might want to try out for yourself. If you would like to see more take notes with me sort of videos, let me know down below. I think those are pretty fun to do, but I've never done one where I like actually walk through how I do it because usually I'm like taking notes from a textbook. But if that's something you're interested in, let me know down below. I hope seeing the progression of my notes from high school to university has been interesting. Thanks for clicking into today's video. Subscribe if you aren't already for more university and lifestyle related videos. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.